Hey everybody, I busted out the green screen because I am getting ready to do my 10 part series, SurfSafe Manager. Each video is going to cover the same topic that is covered in each chapter of the book. If you get the material down in my videos, you will be able to then pass your SurfSafe. SurfSafe Manager is just a harder version of that, which includes things like training staff and, and different stuff like that. So the first thing we're gonna cover is three types of contamination. These are biological, chemical, and physical. What is a good example of biological contamination? I don't know how many of you watched The Last of Us, but that is a perfect example of biological contamination. So basically, if products get contaminated with anything, the entire world will end, everybody will die, and that will just be the end. So, yeah. Chemical contamination can happen by something as simple as spraying food with sanitizer on accident, like you're cleaning off a cutting board or whatever, and then you spray the cutting board with the sanitizer, and then like the mist drifts off. And so basically, you're not supposed to use any kind of spray with chemicals around any food contact services. There's a couple of other things like that. You spray the towel or you dunk the towel into a sani bucket uh, or you have everything closed and sealed off before you start washing it, whatever. But anyways, that's chemical contamination. The last one is physical contamination. Physical contamination is something as simple as you rip open a package of chicken and there is some plastic wrap that somehow gets mixed in with the chicken. There was a horror story of somebody finding... It just hurts my teeth thinking about this, but somebody found a screw in their salad. It came from one of the tomato dicers and it came loose on there and fell into the, with the tomatoes and they tossed the tomatoes and the tomatoes went into the salad and the salad went out to a table and somebody lost a tooth and somebody got sued. So that is an example of physical contamination. The next up is five reasons food becomes unsafe. The five reasons why food becomes unsafe is purchasing from an unsafe source like a guy selling fish out of the trunk of his car in a back alley. That would be an example of unsafe vendors or irreputable vendors failing to cook food correctly. So hopefully you don't know anybody that likes their chicken mid-rare, but if they do, then you probably don't want to eat over at their house anymore because they're not cooking the food correctly. Number three is holding food at incorrect temperatures. Holding temps for food are not always the same as the initial cooking temperature but it's still important to monitor the temps in all of the cold bars, the hot wells, all that stuff. Four is using contaminated equipment. If you've ever seen these cutting boards, that's an example of things that were produced in an effort to stop contaminated cutting boards because if a bunch of people are in a kitchen and they're not communicating to each other, somebody could cut chicken on it, somebody else could grab that same cutting board and start chopping vegetables on it or just chopping beef on it, not realizing that it had been previously used. So the different color cutting boards were designed originally for the purposes of, okay, that's a yellow cutting board used for chicken, I shouldn't use that cutting board. Not all places use these cutting boards, but there are plenty that do. Number five is practicing poor personal hygiene. Not washing your hands, not taking a shower, generally just not taking care of yourself. This can easily cause the contamination of products. This is also a reason why people that sell plates out of their home really shouldn't be doing it unless they really know what they're doing. And even then, it's technically still against the law. The inability of regulating authorities to regulate where people are getting their food and how they're cooking it, we have no idea if there's a cat walking around on their counter that had their paws on the ground and could have got it on the counter and they could have contaminated the food. We don't know. And that food has been sitting in the fridge with a bunch of other stuff. We don't know how they store the chicken, how they store the beef or any of that other stuff. So be really careful. Only get food from trusted sources, whether that is a restaurant or otherwise. Uh, this applies to all food, but it specifically applies to food called TCS. This stands for Time and Temperature Control for Safety. Time, Temperature, Control for Safety. So it's technically TTCS, but it's we'll just call it TCS. Some people knew it in the past as PHF, potentially hazardous food, because chicken could potentially be hazardous and it's food. All right, but TCS is the one that you need to remember. That's what's gonna come up in the test. So this is gonna be a non-exhaustive list, but I'm gonna go through them super fast for you. You are more than welcome to pause it, rewind it, whatever you need to do. So we have beef, pork, lamb, fish, shellfish, 
poultry eggs, milk and dairy products, sprouts, baked potatoes, cooked rice, beans, and veggies. That's cooked beans, cooked veggies, cooked rice. Meat alternatives, soy, tofu, sliced melons, cut tomatoes, leafy greens, and one that a lot of people don't know, which comes back to the people selling plates out of their house, untreated garlic and oil mixtures. People that cook garlic and oil and then leave the oil out on the counter thinking, well, I've cooked it in oil. I see oil with, you know, crap in it all the time. It should be fine. It's not fine. You're going to kill somebody. Sorry. Not sorry. So next up, we are going to cover high risk populations. The high risk populations are elderly people, preschool aged children, and immunocompromised. Yeah, those are the three. All three of these categories either do not have immunity build up or they cannot build that kind of immunity required to prevent foodborne illness because of their age, medical condition, or pills they're taking. My mom, for example, has lupus. She is in her mid 50s. Lupus sucks and she has to take something that tanks her immune system because it's an autoimmune disease. Because of that, there's things she can't have. So next Next time you are thinking about bitching about somebody that ordered a well-done steak, consider that they could have a very horrible condition and they just want to enjoy a meal out with their family. Also, this isn't in the book, but I'm going to add pregnant women to this list. It doesn't outright, in the book, doesn't outright say pregnant women, but I think that we need to recognize that there's a lot of things that pregnant women can't have while they're going through their pregnancy. These are some ways that you can keep your food safe. Purchasing from reputable vendors. So no more trunk fish in the back alley. Controlling time and temperature, having sheets, monitoring the temperatures, using a thermometer appropriately, etc. One easy example of how you can stop cross-contamination is if you have chicken in this front drawer over here, you want it closer to you so that way you're not pulling the chicken up and dragging that chicken with its juice across all of the other product and potentially getting someone sick or killing them. Use the swim, walk, fly method. So cooked foods and then fish, beef, chicken. And obviously practicing good personal hygiene and cleaning as you go, taking care of yourself and making sure to clean and sanitize your area frequently. Now, the thing about ServeSafe Manager is you don't just need to know about ServeSafe, but you also need to know how to train and monitor staff. Taking it seriously will be a big step towards that because if you start taking it seriously, you will start creating a culture of people that will also take it seriously. And you want people that are doing things when you're not around. Treat it like the big deal that it is, hold people accountable and responsible for food safety, and they will learn that that's just how things are done there. All right, the next thing that we are going to cover is food regulator authority. There are several food regulator authorities. This is the FDA, USDA, CDC, and PHS. So the FDA, they inspect all food except for meat, poultry, and eggs. And they also regulate food that is transported across state lines. USDA regulates and inspects meat, poultry, and eggs. And they also regulate food that involves more than one state or crosses state boundaries. They conduct research into foodborne illness outbreaks and assist in investigating foodborne illness outbreaks. So if we go back to The Last of Us, for example, the, the CDC and the PHS would have been the ones investigating that food safety issue and trying to figure out where it came from. But everybody probably died before that happened, so. I just wanted to say congratulations. This is everything covered in chapter one. You've already essentially read chapter one. Now, obviously this video is not going to be the same as actually physically reading chapter one, but it will definitely help you. I even went through the extra step of taking study questions that I thought would be helpful and put them down in the description. So go down there, check out the study questions, answer whichever ones you want, copy and paste them into like Word or Notepad or whatever it is, you, whatever uh, word thing you use. This will help you get through all of chapter one. Now, there's going to be nine more videos after this. Keep in mind that this is really important. So the ServeSafe Manager exam will have a pool of questions that they ask everybody all the time. And then they have a percentage of questions that they pull randomly from the book. So these videos are covering every single thing that's in this book. So the odds are something that I have said, most of what I have said in here is going to end up on some part of the test. That includes chapter one all the way through chapter 10. This is inevitably going to be part of a playlist. So if you're in that playlist, wanted to say hi, thanks for coming by and sticking around. If this is the first one you watch, stay tuned. Now, the next chapter is going to be 
forms of contamination. Uh, we're going to go in depth on the forms of contamination, and we're going to talk about deliberate contamination of food, responding to foodborne illness outbreaks, and food allergens. And uh, yeah, so you guys have an awesome day. Good luck on your upcoming test, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>